Let's work a little bit with radicals. Uh, we'll remind ourselves that for radicals, there are two primary components. We have one, which is referred to as the index, and a second, which is referred to as the radicand. The radicand is whatever we're performing the radical on, which could just be a number or some type of expression. The index is uh, the number of things you want to multiply by themselves in order to get the radicand. Uh, an example would be the third root of, uh, let's say, 64. And the third root of 64 is equal to 4 because 4 times itself 3 times is equal to 64. Uh, radicals also have a coefficient, so you might see a 3 in front or an x in front, something like that is referred to as the coefficient of the radical. In order to combine, and by combine we mean add or subtract radicals, we need to have the same index. In this case, there's an implied index of 2 on both of these. And you also need the same radicand. And the way that you then combine them is you add or you subtract the coefficient of the radicals. In our case, we have coefficients of 1 for both of these radicals. Uh, this restriction is not true for multiplication. For multiplication, all you need is the same index. And if you have the same index, then you are free to multiply your two radicands under the same square root. This is also true of division. And it's important to keep in mind that these can move back and forth between them. So identifying when you might want to write it as a single square root versus when you might want to write it as the division of two square roots could be important for problem solving. So a couple of examples. Uh, square root of 32 plus the square root of 2. Uh, we'll remind ourselves that this is combining, so we need the same radicand. But here we have a radicand of 32. So what we need to do is we need to rewrite it. This requires us breaking this up into the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 using our multiplication rule. And the square root of 16 is, of course, 4. So we get 4 root 2. And the problem now becomes 4 root 2 plus root 2. And we are going to use our rule of adding or subtracting the coefficients to give us 5 root 2. And that is the simplified version of that. Here we have a, a problem in function notation. We're given a function, and then we're being told what x is equal to. So we're here being asked to solve f of negative 2 root 3. And that's going to be equal to 10 minus negative 2 root 3 cubed. Notice that I put x in parentheses. That's a very good practice to keep in order to avoid making order of operations mistakes or positive and negative sign mistakes. So we're going to go ahead and cube negative 2 root 3. So that means multiply it by itself three times. And if it's helpful, we can go ahead and write it out. Um, I'm going to resist the urge to just grab a calculator and solve this. Uh, to multiply now, it, it's useful, useful to, to remember that this long expression here is just negative 2 times root 3 times negative 2 times root 3. I'm leaving off the third one for now until we, we figure out the first product. Uh, remembering that negative 2 root 3 is just a way of saying negative 2 times root 3 is helpful because that reminds us that multiplication can happen in any order we want and we will get the same answer. So we are allowed to go ahead and multiply those coefficients. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. And then multiply the two radicals. Root 3 times root 3 is 3, giving us 12. And now we want to do 12 times negative 2 root 3, giving us an answer of negative 24 root 3. So we're going to take that, put that back into our function. 10 minus this is y. I put that in parentheses, so now I'm comfortable with the fact that it is 10 minus a negative number, giving us 10 plus 24 root 3. I'm not going to add those to get 34 root 3, because in order to add, you have to have radicals with the same index, and 10 does not have a radical on it, so those are not like terms. A couple of common mistakes. The biggest mistake that people will make is when you're taking the square root of two things that are being added and turning this into x squared plus y. 
by taking the square root of each one of them. The reason this is a mistake is this is assuming that you're allowed to rewrite this as the square root of x to the fourth plus the square root of y squared. This breaking square roots apart does in fact work with multiplication as we reminded ourselves of up here. It does not work with addition of two things. So we are not allowed to make this transition and do the square root separately, which means we are not allowed to simplify this as x squared plus y. This is in fact in its simplest form. There is no way to apply the square root to that expression. Similarly, if we write the square root as a one-half power, we may be sometimes uh, uh, tempted to distribute almost that exponent and call this x to the one-half plus two, or this four to the one-half, the square root of two. Uh, you could also write that square root of x plus two. Uh, but this is assuming that exponents spread through parentheses when there is addition inside the parentheses, and that is not accurate. We could see that this is in fact the same mistake if we rewrite this as the square root of x plus four. We're assuming we can take the square root of each of those separately, and you cannot. The third common mistake is, is comes from a problem like this, two square root of x minus the square root of x. And sometimes we might be inclined to say, hey, square root of x minus square root of x is zero. So those will go away, and this gives us two left over. And, and you will see this sometimes, so be cautious of it. But as we reviewed above, if we want to add or subtract two radicals and they have the same index and the same radicand, which these do, they're both square roots, they both have a radicand of x, you in fact add or subtract the coefficients. And the second one, even though it's not written, does have a coefficient of 1, so this is equal to 1 square root of x. Though that looks a little silly, we would never write the number 1 in front of a square root of x because we know if we just write square root of x, it means that there is one of them or we have 1 times root x. Uh, those are a couple of mistakes that you just want to, I want to identify just to make sure we recognize them and don't make them once we get to more complicated material uh, and these exponent rules, these radical rules are just something we need to be super comfortable with. Here are eight practice problems. Uh, so you're going to stop the video, solve each of these eight problems, and then on the Google site, you can check the solutions to make sure that you got them right. Uh, if you find that you've gotten any wrong, uh, please reach out or, um, or bring it up at some point so that we can discuss and make sure we're comfortable with radicals.